I'm Julia Davids, the Artistic Director of the Canadian Chamber Choir and co-author with Stephen Latour of the book Vocal Technique, a guide to classical and contemporary styles for conductors, teachers, and singers. Today we're going to spend two minutes on the registers of the voice. For all singers, there are two main registers. We have a lot of ways of referring to registers, but let's call them the upper register and the lower register. It's important to mention that the common names for these, head voice for the upper register and chest voice for the lower register, come from where we feel conductive resonance, but do not reflect where the resonance actually occurs. When we sing in our lower register or chest register, we use the thyroarytenoid muscles or TAs to govern our pitch. The vocal folds are thicker and make a lot of firm contact with each other. This creates a powerful sound with lots of overtones. Ah. When we sing in our upper register, the cricothyroid muscles or the CTs stretch and thin our vocal folds by tilting our thyroid cartilage. In order for the CTs to do this, our larynx needs to be reasonably low. In our upper register or head voice, less of the folds come into contact and they touch more lightly. This creates a less complex sound. Most of us are aware of where our register shifting areas, our breaks or passaggi are located. These are the places where we need to shift control over our vocal folds between TAs and CTs. To practice moving through your registers, use your straw or another SOVT exercise and use lots of slides. Remember to allow your larynx to remain comfortably low, avoid extraneous tension, and use excellent breath support. Thanks for watching. The CCC reminds you to keep singing.